and caught her. Mm. No, look, it looks uh, like it's I have a here. friend who's really into, uh, what's it called? There it goes. Uh, uh, what's it called? Into the Disgaea series. Mm. What's your opinion on the, or do you not, or do you not play them much? I don't think I've played any of them. I didn't hear about them until they came to Switch. But oh. I was like, JRPGs. This is a JRPG, isn't it? Kind of. Tactical. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, tactical JRPG. I mean, I like my, like, RTSs. Like, mm -hmm. I've played Civ since I was eight. No, this is the top down, grid based Final Fantasy Tactics style game. Yeah, I didn't play Final Fantasy Tactics either. Uh, I recommend it. War of the Lions was really fun. Don't people want it's... that to come back or something? Like a new game? Because it hasn't been. Uh, game yeah, game. the director for it's working on the MMO for the most part. Right now, the. Uh, what is that? 14? Yeah. So people want them to come back for another story in Ivalice, because, uh, oh, what games is that? It's that one, 12, 14, and r not Radiant Historia, what is it, Vagrant Story, all take place on the same planet sort of thing, but like in different timelines. So it's like a one, like, world kind of thing. Hmm. So normally there's like little nods to everything throughout. Alright, you guys ready to get started? Okay. Well, yep. let's do this. Alright. So, uh, we are back to our Japanese lesson here. And you're going to need to uh, draw some more stuff. And you're going to need something to draw with, so... We are doing katakana today. Oh, okay. Oh cool. Boy. <laughs> I think I got most of my katakana memorized. So last time we did hiragana and we finished up all the hiragana, excluding doing like diacritics and whatnot. But uh, so uh, we are going to go over the ones that we worked on last time. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So we're going to use a quiz. So we did to recall eight of them. Hello, Jake. Welcome to the stream. All right. Do you guys know this one here? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, which one is this? Who would like to answer? You want to start or should I? Uh, you can start if you want. Uh, that would be you. That is correct. That is you. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. Which one's this? Got it. Uh, I think so. What, Some what? of these I keep getting mixed up. <laughs> okay, so which one do you think this is? Um, is this Mo? Ooh. Unfortunately, it is not. That is oh, Ho. Wait, ho, yep. yeah. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> uh, 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 I, 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 when I, when I saw it originally too, I'm like Mo. I'm like, wait, no, that's not Mo. That's <laughs> that's one over. Yeah, these Mo's, are Mo's um... a simple one. <laughs> Yeah, How about this one I, here? Uh, get mixed up. Yeah. Yep. Ha. Huh. That is yeah. correct. And let's check the next one. Yep. Uh oh man, I always get this one mixed up too. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I chose them. <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, I've been trying to get these ones straight for the last couple of days, but I keep mixing them up. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to take a stab. E is this me? Ooh, no. Wait. No. No. Hang on. Mm, yeah, no. Nah, I've got them all mixed up again. <laughs> all right. Well, you don't, uh, that would be me. That is correct. Now, one thing that I use to remember this is that if you look at the way it's drawn... Uh, mei in Japanese means eyes, and if you look at it closely, mm. it kind of looks like an eye, like a human eye. Oh, that's a good way. So it I is I think my mei. problem is I, uh, I forget, like, there's the ones that look similar, and then I forget which Yeah, that one looks a lot like... like... Which ones mm -hmm. are in it, like what letter series it is, I'm like, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one looks way too close to new. 
Yep. Yep. All right. So, what about this one here? Yep. Yep. Oh. Okay. That is correct. What's the what is the, what what is it? How do you pronounce it? And if it's before a vowel or whatever, it's it's O. It's O. It's always O. Okay. It's always O. The reason why I oh, use okay. the W O here, it's not Wo. It's O. The reason why oh. they do Wo like this is so that when you're actually um, using a keyboard and you're trying mm -hmm. to type it out, if you type W O out when you have the hiragana function. It will gotcha. take and create this character instead of making the other O character. I found a great like website for that, and I lost it for like typing out stuff. What about this one here? Yep. Uh, yep. What is it? Bra. That is correct. And this one? Yep. Uh, this is the other one that I'm always confused. <laughs> There's technically three for this one that have the similar. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. That would be uh, they. That is correct. And this one here? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yep. What is it? Yo. That is correct. Good. All right, so we're going to move on to certain phrases that uh, that are constantly used in Japanese. The first one is itekimasu. 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 And the next one is itterashai. Itterashai. Now, do either of you know what these mean? Uh, uh, um, isn't it like, excuse I me, and... I think it's I'm headed out for the day and it's have a nice day or something, right? Yeah, it's basically, so if I were to directly translate this, it's I'm going to go and come back. And then mm -hmm. the other phrase is go and come back. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the first one is I'm heading out and uh, basically it's I'll see you when you get home. Is the, if, if I were to translate it uh, colloquially instead of doing it directly. Mm. So it's the best the best way to say this is if you just say itekimas like that, it sounds uh what is it uh cold. So usually people will say this as they're opening the front door and it'll be like itekimas with a very long mas at the very end. Yeah. So would you guys like to try it? Itekimas. And it's the same with the uh, the next phrase is Itterashai. Really? Itterashai. Itterashai. Very the good. Weeper, like I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an anime. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, so this is the phrase used for um I'm leaving and then it's go and come back. And uh, the next one is uh, the, f oh, I totally forgot to put in the correct, what happened? Ah, oh, well, I'll draw it in then. Here we go. This got messed up here. So I'll just write it in. So the first one in here is ta daima. So, tadaima. 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 So, I forgot to put the little mar there. And then the n next one here is. Okai. E. Ni. Na. Sai. Okai. Ni. Na. Sai. Okai. Ni. Na. Sai. Okai. Ni. Na. Sai. So I'm pretty sure both of you know what Tadaima is. Uh, that's like I'm home, right? Yep. Or that is... I returned. Welcome yep. back. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. That's basically what it is. So uh, the funny thing is with this is you don't just use this at home. You use it at work. 
So if you're at work and you have to go out and do something and then you come back, or if you go on your lunch break and you come back, you would say this to your colleagues. Cool. So it's uh, Tadaima. Go ahead and give it a give it a try again. Oh, uh, Tadaima. Tadaima. And then Okaeri Nasai. Okaeri Nasai. Okaeri Nasai. Very good. All right, we'll move oh, on. Oh man, those 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 like return ones are like messing with my tongue right now. Ah, oh, this one. Oh. I don't know what happened. I had all these saved, and apparently it didn't save the uh, the phrases I put in. So the first one here is, and most people know this one here as well. It's Ita da Mas. So Ita da Kimas. Ita da Kimas. And Gochiso sama deshita. Gochi so sama deshita. Okay. Gochi so sama deshita. Very okay. good. So, the funny thing is, is itadakimasu is uh, you always say it that way. So, depending on how polite you want to be, and this is a thing just to keep in mind with Japanese in, in itself, is that the longer your sentence is, the more polite you are. The shorter your sense, the, the, your sentence is, the least polite you're being. So, you could say, "Gochi so." Okay. All right, let me s get this here. Why? There we go. Uh, "Gochi so sama," or "Gochi so sama deshita." So each each one of these is correct and means the same thing. It just de depends on how polite you want to be. So as an example with um, Lavitz, Lavitz, I've e known you for a very long time. If we went uh -huh. out to eat at a restaurant and I were paying for your dinner and whatnot, and you wanted to say that, like, in essence, thank you for the food and whatnot, you could just say gochi so. Okay. But if you were to go out with your boss and your boss would pay for your dinner, you would use gochiso sama deshita. Yeah. So, we'll move on to the next one here. And we touched on this last time, but we're going to go over it again. So, funny Wait, thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you, do you guys want to just tell me what's going on? Nothing. These are the ones I've been having trouble remembering just because it's hard to, like, study that, like, on paper. Right. When you don't, like, don't have it memorized. Right. So, in for sentence structure in Japanese, or do you want, uh, do you guys want to explain what these are or tell me what these are from what you remember uh, from last time? Sure. It's written there, too. Yep. Um, so, they're used to... Um, either describe the subject of the sentence or a place right. and they're pronounced differently when they're used in that um, manner right so even though like the um, character is ha it's used as a marker in the sentence to mark like the subject which means that it's pronounced as wa mm -hmm. and this will be more relevant in the next um, lesson because we're going to be doing a whole bunch of conversation in the next lesson mm-hmm this is just basically your primer lesson to get you started. All right. All right. So next we're going to go with combination sounds, and this is going to be interesting. So uh, if you look underneath the combination sounds, I have ri, mi, he, ni, chi, shi, and ki. And this also, uh, what is it, um, applies to uh, diacritics as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Although some of them you probably will never see matched together. But this row here is how you create, um, what is it, your mu or your mia or mm -hmm. your the sound a cat makes, which is nya. 
And yeah. what makes this difference is, is that you use these hiragana, and it works with katakana as well, and you use the a smaller version of the uh, the yayu yo, and you put them together, and instead of uh, shia, it becomes sha. Shia, sha. It just becomes sha. Sha. Okay, so there's no y sound. In there's that no y it. side in, in and out. It's just it's like doing okay. this, like sha. Okay, so that's just for the s or the the what's it called, right? The it's the, it's the she sound, right? The she and the chi sounds. Yeah. Okay. So both of these are going to going to be having, and it's the same with the the g sounds as well. So it's not going to be jia; it's going to be ja. Jo. Ja. Okay. Ju. Ja. Okay. Sha sho shu, cha cho mm -hmm. chu. But the one, the diacritic with this one here is so rare, you'd, you're almost never, ever going to see something like something like this here. You'll, you'll almost right. never see that. So except for those three, the rest of them are pronounced with the Y sound, though, right? Yep, pretty much. Gotcha. So, yeah, your, your special ones are just going to be... Or, let me erase this real quick here. Your special ones are going to be these two. Other gotcha. than that, everything else has a, uh, like a y nya or mya or hya or bya or kya. Yeah. So yeah. the next thing Chow, is, Q, Q. yeah. The next one we're going to work on over here on this other side here is going to be this tsu. Now, when the tsu is small, and I know that these look like they're large size, but they're not. <laughs> uh, when the, a small tsu is added to um, a a word, it means that this sound. Let me change color here. This consonant over here doubles. And oh, the it, one before it. Yeah. Got it. So this one this this spelling here would come out and be like E T T E like that. Yeah. And Te. right. So it wouldn't be like E T T E, it would be E T E. So it's kind of it's kind of like if I did this and then put a small comma here, and then I put te. It'd be it te. That's the best way to describe it. And it's very uh, later on in Jap in like Japanese lessons, you're gonna find out that there is um, uh, three different like here. I'll just show you. So we have ki, te. Then there's, oh. let me try this again real quick. I'm do, I'm doing this from kind of far away, so. Sure. So you have, you have kite, you have kite, and then you have kite. And the sounds are very different and the funny thing is, is that usually beginners of Japanese cannot hear the difference, mm -hmm. but they're subtle differences and they mean completely different things. Cause the first one means to cut the second one here, um, needs like to wear or to come. And the third one means to listen. Gotcha. So it's kite, kite, and kite. Yep. That is correct. And it'll be more important. So you have kite, kite, and kite. Yeah. Gotcha. So can I just check that, like, so for all of the re, me, he, me, he, she, and he, mm -hmm. that they can have, like, all of the small symbols in front of them? It's not just, like, specific <laughs> ones? Yep, they can what? have all of these. So, like, this one here is dia, dio, dio. Mia, mu, mio. Yeah. Hya, hu, hyo. Just like that. Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Because you you only were talking like about two of them, and I was like, hang on. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. We, he was talking that the 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 chi and the shi don't use the y sound when doing that. So. So it's not xia, it's sha. Yeah. 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 So those are the these are the only two that are over here that are special. Yeah. The these ones right here are the only two that 
have special sounds. And that goes for uh, the G character as well. This one here. Yeah. yeah oh, G. Sorry. I'm on like, yeah. And I'm like, wait, no. <laughs> so this one yeah, here, yeah. like this one ja. here is Sha. Ja. And this ja. one here is Ja. Ja, got it. Like a jar of jam? Uh, yes. With a, with a, uh, with a soft R instead of a hard R. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on to the next bit here. So now we're going to work on some combination sounds. All right, so uh, the first one here, this is uh, the first section up here. This one and this one here is to show you that there's a big difference in saying both of these here. So mm. the first one shows the small yo, and the second one shows the big yo. So it's gyoin and gyoin. Except for that's B. Oh, gyoin. Gotcha. My bad. So, and th why this is relevant is the first one, gyoin. If you guys want to give it a try, gyoin. 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 And the extra one is bioin. 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 Okay. Yep. Bioin. Right. So if you were to having conversation you say to someone wow i really need to go to the hairstylist and you were to say it really fast <laughs> it might come out saying that you need to go to the hospital and they'd call you an ambulance <laughs> <laughs> likewise if you need to go to the hospital and uh, you're bleeding out <laughs> and someone is like why do you want to go to the hairstylist <laughs> But most people will understand what you mean when you say that. If you if you look yeah, sick and yeah. you say bioin, people are going to know that you want to go to the hospital. But this is just to show you that there's um uh a big difference between the two. So just so you know. So the next one here we have right there. We go on bottom. Or no, okay, got it. All right. I gotta remember the stream's like a second behind me. Why don't uh, I'm nice? Why don't you give this one a go? Uh, okay. Hang on. I've forgotten what the diacritic one is. That one is ga. Okay, G K is G, that's right. Um, hang on. I said my first one so confidently, I just completely forgot about <laughs> the diacritic. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to think like what the extra bit goes. It's like shio yu ga. Close. This one is a small yo, so it's this becomes show. Shio or show. Show. I, I have oh, like the, okay. the 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 y in my head for some reason. Here, let me yeah. let me let me go back and uh, give you uh just go back just a little bit here, and we'll come back to this real quick. So where you have this one here, this one comes out like sha like this. Yeah. Okay. No, it's just it's 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 something I'm gonna keep working on. Right. It, it's 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 I I understand it. It's just when I'm reading it, it's still going with the Y sound for some reason. Right. Right. And I understand that. It it, it it's a little, it's a little confusing. I understand mm -hmm. that. So this one here is. Uh. I'm nice. I think that one's you still. Yep. Yeah. So that would. Then the Shayuga. Shoga. Shoga. So the ooh sound in this one here, and I don't think that we, I think I might have accidentally skipped over this. So I'll go over this real quick here. So when you have an O sound, so as an example, you have high school, okay? It's like ko o ko o, isn't it? Yeah, so it's it's coal coal. Now, if you were to read coal coal, you would read it here as ko ko. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Japanese, when you elongate an o sound, you add an u to show that it's elongated. Mm. Why? <laughs> it's, 
it's it's Japanese. Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is adding an O in there. Kind now, of. let's 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 uh, take this a step further, okay? So, Koko is high school, and high school student is Koko Sei, with the mm-hmm. elongated A sound. Right. That is Koko Sei. Okay. Mm. Now this the best. Especially infuriating knowing that Katakana <laughs> has an easier answer to this. Yes, Katakana has an easier <laughs> answer to this, but Katakana is only used for non Japanese words. <laughs> I, I, I got it, but why wouldn't you use the more elegant, smarter solution? <laughs> <laughs> so these ones here. Uh, so. These ones here are markers that the vowel has been elongated. Mm-hmm. Now, you want me to throw a big wrench into this? Do I'll it. Show you something. Uh, this this is going to be great. Okay, so you have the die character, right? Everyone knows the die character from the mountain and whatnot in Kyoto, where they light it on fire and whatnot. So die is the um, omiomi, which is the Chinese reading. Okay. So the Japanese reading called the kunyomi is o ki with a elongated o sound. Now watch this. O at the beginning of a word if it's elongated is not this. That is incorrect. O at the beginning of one of these words here is an extra o. Okay, sure. <laughs> so there's no double O. Wait, no, but if you were doing a... No. Can so, the single one, single non-consonants, like yes. the vowel, can they get the uh, uh sound to them? Like the, what is it, the su in front? Or no? None can, of those can, right? Which ones? Oh, one uh, of, so the one of yeah, like these... IUAO cannot get uh don't have a su in front of them. No, a tiny su. No, right because now. it it needs to it needs to be attached to a consonant. Mm-hmm. So Got another it. one is like you have like okasan. Mm-hmm. So oka. Ah. And then you have. Uh, Song. There's an extra ah added to this here. And that makes it the longer vowel. Yes. Only the <laughs> okay, so so only the what is the word I'm looking for? Only the, the O sounds use the U? Only the O sounds use the U and, and the rest of them use the proper aligning ones, right? Right. And then you have the the A sounds like the say that we did before, use the mm-hmm. E sound at the end of it to make it elongated say like you can if you when you're pronouncing it you can you can you can hear it yeah well yeah but it's the same thing with the coal coal yeah you can you can barely hear it but it's it's one of those things that it, it doesn't sound like it structurally makes sense but it's one of those things that they use in japanese to show you a marker of something inside a sentence. Gotcha. If you were to uh, Romanji Koko, would mm-hmm. it be like C double O C? I mean K double O K double O, or would it be K O U? So there are two way there. There, I think in Japan there are four different ways to write hiragana. Like type it, you mean, or write it? Well, type it or write it. And so there's um. So let me go back here real quick. There is a form of hiragana that would take this here, what we know as sha, and mm-hmm. they would write it like this. Right. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Oh. Yes. And oh, why? to make it even more infuriating, you have <laughs> like, uh, here, hold on a second here. Let me get this. So you would have cha, right? Which is basically mm. this here, like that, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they would write it like this. 
C Y A. No, T. T Y Y. Yeah, but why? Because it's part of the Tachi Tsuteto. Yeah, but the Romaji for it is C H I. No, in in their in their uh, what is it? In this Romaji system, this is actually T I. Okay, you know how that's confusing because the C H I is literally right above it. Right, right. Well, no, it's confusing. But if you look, yeah, if you look really closely, there's also the T I in there as well. Okay. In parentheses. Oh, is that not just an S? Oh, it is not. So if you look right er, right here, there's mm -hmm. the T-I right there. If you look right mm -hmm. here, there's an S-I. Yeah. But it's actually pronounced G and C, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because in Japanese, the, um, the sound C, like if this here, like er, I'm just going to use like uh, phonetic sounds that are uh, similar. Here. So wait, is only one way correct or are both ways fine? Uh, both ways are correct. One yeah. way is kind of stupid. <laughs> there, there, there are those that uh, that Just... like it and those that don't. Why is my pen not ready? Oh, there it goes. Okay. My pen was ready. For the Romanji, let, let, let's just use this as like a hypothetical, not really a hypothetical. If I were trying to use a translator and I had to type in the Romaji. I could use the S H A, right? Sha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here here's what I'm going to say, and then this is what my teachers taught me when I was in university, is that you have like uh, that ko ko, right? Mm-hmm. Like this here. Or the ko ko, like that. In Japanese you would write it like this. In the Hepburn style, it would literally be Coco, like this. Mm -hmm. Some of them put a little like asterisk mark above the top of it. Um, some, some don't. But if I were to have you write something in, in um, Romaji, which come lesson three, uh, you're not going to write anything in Romaji. Sure. Or unit three. Um, I I want you to write this out like this. And the reason is, is that when you go to, when you finally learn how to type and type it on like a keyboard and whatnot and type things out, you're going to need to write it like this. Yeah. Okay. So if you learn it this way, this way you're actually going to be able to um, I input stuff into a computer. Right. I have a little bit of experience with typing in Japanese. I think it's... After every character, you can press space, right? And it'll let you choose from... After typing the Romaji, and then you can press space and let you choose your options from there. Yep, your kanji and options. And it's actually best to write out five or six characters in one go, or write out a sentence in one go, and then tab through the different parts, because the more stuff you add to it, the, the narrower your options become and the easier it is to find what you need. Right. All right, so let's move yeah. on to the next one. Right here. Uh, what, just do you? Or are we going to the other side? Okay. <laughs> is this like, Ryu? This. <laughs> is no, this Ryu? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's the pronunciation of this? <laughs> do you? Very good. So this is this is one of the sounds that are is very uh, very difficult for um, a lot of uh, of uh, English speakers that are learning Japanese because this sound doesn't exist inside mm -hmm. the English language whatsoever. So, really? Huh. You play video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so I feel like so I, here, I know he, the Ryu is the biggest one, but growing up, I think I did it Ryu. So I would like just go right. Ryu. Right. But you never get the, the solid view. So let's take a look at these two names here. I'm going to say both of them. Or I'm going to say one of them, and you tell me which one it is. Okay? Uh, okay. Now listen closely. Yoko. Uh-huh. Which one did I say? 
the one with the R. I was going to say the other one. <laughs> really? Because I said the one with the R. Yeah. You did? I heard, yep. the, I heard the little R at the beginning. Yoko and Yoko. So, I was wondering if I was hearing the R or not. I was so like, let, let's, let's do this one more time, okay? Yoko. I think that was the one with the Y. Nor without the R. I'm nice. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to stick to my guns that it was the Y. <laughs> And that is correct. I did say the one with the Y. Let's try this one more time, okay? Yoko. With the R. Yeah, with the R. Yep, that is correct. So, uh, in conversation, this uh, this gets, uh, gets uh, what is it, very difficult for non-native speakers. Because someone will say something to you, and, like, as an example... Let me erase this real quick here, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, I'm barely R understanding passing. <laughs> no R Y O, yo, means um, dorms in Japanese, like the dormitory. Gotcha. So, if someone is using this in a sentence, you may hear the yo because they're saying the yo really fast. So it's it's one of those things just to be be careful of. I'll tell you guys something funny um, after the stream ends, but it it'll have to wait. Just remind me about this after the stream ends, and I'll tell you about it. It's really funny. Uh, so the next thing we're, we're going to move on to is we're going to move on to uh, the small two, and one of them has a big two. And I think if you look closely, you can tell which one has the big two, and which one has the small two. Okay. The bottom one's the big one. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and read the first one for me. And who's, Ooh. who's next? Uh, I'm nice. Me. I'm nice next. Uh, oh, you gave her the two hard ones. Dang. <laughs> 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 I, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on a minute. Can you remind me what the little suit does again? So that what it does to... is it takes this consonant here and it makes a double a double consonant so can you tell me what this character is right here waiting for twitch to work um that's uh that is uh sa that is correct so what it'll do is it'll take the s sound it'll take this Uh, S sound and it'll double it. So you have to say it a little bit longer. So we'll write, I'll write this out for you. So can you tell me what the first one is up here? Key. That is key. So key we will do ten and very good. <laughs> key yeah, with that one, it seems like well, most of the time you're almost adding that double consonant to like the first the the letters that came before it, yeah. Yep. So it's like kisaten. Very good, kisaten. So kisaten is tea house. It's a Japanese style tea house. It's also used as a cafe because they usually serve coffee now too, but traditionally it was for tea houses. And uh, so the next one here. Uh, oh, that's cheating. That was from the last page. Itekimasu. Very good. <laughs> so, th <laughs> so this one here is oh, is the I T T E. Itekimasu. Yeah, so you almost always pronounce that that the first consonant with the doubles with the vowel yep. before. Yeah, it's kind of like making this here. You're taking this here and putting a comma between it with that small sudden sudden or sudden pause. So eat tikimas. So and the next one here is uh I'm nice. Do you want to give it a try? Uh yep. Can you remind me what the diacritic is? I really need to practice those. 
Okay, so it's Tay. What is it? Yeah. And Tay with the diacritic is the D sound, so it'd be Day. Um. Okay, let's see. Itsudai su ka. Very good. Yep. And so it's Itsudesu ka. Itsudesu ka. Wait. Itsu de itsu oh, Okay, so it's like two words. Yep. So it's itsu and deska. That was the one that was blowing my mind when I realized it. I'm like, there's no spaces in the Japanese sentence structure. <laughs> Zero. And the the and the Why? way and the well. Let's get, let let us go back, and I will show you why. <laughs> it's because they have markers to tell you when <laughs> things are. <laughs> Uh, yeah. In the sentences. True. But not, or I guess, uh, well, not right there, right? Well, right here, yeah. What, in the Itseki, or what was it? Itekimasu? No, 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 no. Not, I mean in the current situation we were just reading. Oh, yeah. There there wasn't one in there because it was an adverb. It wasn't a... Uh... So... <laughs> Yeah, itsu deska. So right here, this itsu and deska. You'll learn about deska in the next uh, lesson. Uh, but uh, basically, des is a is a verb marker for mm -hmm. um, like am is an r. So it's a, it's the verb marker at the end of a sentence. Ka and ka so, usually for a question, right? Yep, you use ka for basically a question. Itsu is when. So basically, it's like, when is it? When is it? All right. So in when we do sentences the next time, like the first time right here, we will have tan jo be. And then let me change the color here. Wa itsu desu ka? So, when Tan is your birthday? Very good. Tanjobi is birthday. So, Tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? Tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? Very good. This is birthday for anyone listening in on the stream here. So, Tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? Tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? Tanjobi wa itsu desu ka? Good. No, I figured out the ha wa thing when I was going through some of those textbook sections. Because mm -hmm. I knew the word and I'm like, wait, but that says ha. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but that has to be wa. And I was like, oh, wait, that thing that we did. All right. So, yeah. so we're going to be moving on to our um, drawing section here and we're going to be doing katakana this time. This is a hell of a lot easier. There's no loop-de-loops. -loops, it's a bunch of straight lines. So, and uh, what's uh, funny about this is that if you have an elongated sound, like uh, um, Lavitz was referring to before, I'll put I'll go to the next page here and I'll show you. So let's say that you need to elongate K, like that. You would just write this, or that's a. Hold on. And then you just put a line, and that just that line marker means that it is. It's k instead of k. So <laughs> if you were to if you were to write the word game, which is a uh, what is it? Um, if you were to write the word game in Japanese, game, game. game. Uh -huh. Game. That makes more sense. So, this this line right here signifies that I sound <laughs> that we learned from hiragana. <laughs> Eventually, right. In the future, they will they will just use that for everything. Right. So, 
in on this page here we have the di uh, the the diacritics are added to this we're not going to worry about these here with drawing them because sure, they're basically the same thing with lines so we're just going to focus on the a ah, ka sa ta na so let's uh, go to the ne the next uh, section mm -hmm. here so we're going to work mm -hmm. on the i u a o all right so get your drawing pad out and let's get started with this that's why mine look, all looks weird. I'm adding it together. Okay, so the first one we're going to work on is ah. And I need a black line. There we go. So you come across the top and you make a flick downwards. Just like that. And then you bring a line in like that. So you can come up at an angle and bring it down. And that's going to be your ah. All right. We'll work on E next. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. And your E is basically two lines. One that kind of comes down at a curve, and one that comes here. Like a slanty T. Yep. <laughs> and then the next one is ooh. And ooh, or ooh starts with the mark on top. And then comes here, and then down. So you start with the mark on top, and come down. And this is how you would draw ooh. And the next we're going to do is A. And with A, we have two lines, one coming down. Now, if you're doing this the way you're supposed to, it's one, two, three. And uh, usually, when you draw this one here, this line at the very top here is slightly longer than the bottom line. Yeah. Just slightly, though. It doesn't have to be, like... like longer. So, yeah. Or, no, it's shorter. Sorry. The one on the bottom... The, like, on on the, bo the one on the bottom is uh, is longer than the one on the top. Now, you don't yeah. want to... You don't want to do this where, you, where you're, like, drawing it, where it's, like, this, and then this, and then doing that. Yeah, that... That's not good. Uh, you want to just have it just a slightly bit longer at the bottom for your A sound. And then the next one we're gonna do is O. And O is you make a T and then you put a little tail on it. So the tail and the bottom part of the T should be sort of the same length. Uh, roughly the same. It's this this one here is usually a little bit, or this is this right here is usually a little bit lower than that. So you want when you're when you're doing this like like this here. Most times when I've seen it, this line here stops right before it gets to being. Uh, lower than this here. Okay. So the next one is Ka, and this one's going to look very similar to the ones that you saw before. I, Shopper. Yep. I have a tendency to draw this. Like, you can just literally stop. I don't think you have to put the flick into it at all. Oh, you do. My bad. 
until you do this, just like that. And what's what makes this one different than the other one is that there's there's no mark at the very top. Hmm. Next one is key. This one's very easy. It's two lines and one through the center. It looks like that. The other key, <laughs> just without the extra stuff. Yep. Looks just like the other key, and uh, the second line is slightly longer than the first line. Oh, the second line is longer. Yes. Gotcha. Or, like, the st of these two lines right here, of the, yeah. the horizontal lines. The second gotcha. line of the horizontal lines is longer than the other one. Like a telephone pole. Exactly. Or... <laughs> a road with a uh, fence. Hmm. So next we have Koo. So this one here is literally you, what you want is you want the angle of this to match the angle of that of these two lines. You want them to be roughly at the same angle. But one Does thing... Does usually not have that one, that the first line, or the line to the left going above the middle line, or no? Huh. Line to the left? The little one. Yeah, the little one. I usually think of it as going above the line. So you, like, you, you start with that one, and then in the middle of that one, you put the, the second part. I might be wrong. I think you might be thinking of K. I always think of those as almost the same thing. Just one has a little extra bit on it. Okay. So oh, this, one, looking at. this one here is yeah, two? Yeah, it's, it's on all the reference material, too. That's why. Weird. Am I drawing this wrong? I don't think I am. Oh, it's yeah. Very... Okay, yeah. It's, it's, it, there's, it, it might be a font issue. So you can you can do it like this, but the majority of fonts and ways I've seen people draw it have literally been just like this. Like it's not very pronounced, mm -hmm. and it could just be a font style. So the next one is K, and this one here you do need a longer line, right? And then down like that, and that one is K. Oh, wow. It's even this one for the font style. Oh, then. sorry. Sorry. My bad. I did that one wrong. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> there we go. That's like, K. Wait, 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 wait. That's K. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that one there is K. So one hook here, and then this one here. The bottom one here needs to be longer than this one up here on top. So I made that one a little bit the st one on top a little bit too long. And that's for K. And then for Ko. So when you do Ko, you're supposed to do these as one and then bring it back like that. Pretty sure I'm doing that right. <laughs> Just double checking. Yeah. <laughs> so you, it's it's two strokes. So one, two. One, two. Okay. And we'll move on to the next one here. Only the Japanese would have a letter that is so precise. <laughs> <laughs> so we have... Next one is Sa. It's just like the Hiragana Sa. It's 
except for there's no little hook. So one, two, just like that. That's Sa. Next we have Shi. Now this is going to be important because when we get to uh, Tsu, mm -hmm. it's going to be a little bit different. So yeah, this one like here smiley faces. <laughs> is two lines down like this, and then one line that starts here and then goes and flicks upward. It starts from the bottom and goes up. Right. So you want to make sure that these lines aren't like this. You want to make sure that they come in and are semi-horizontal uh, and then flick upward. Were there six characters that use this style in Katakana? Something like that? Uh, there's four, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no. F three? No, five. Five. There's five that use this style. <laughs> what number was I at? <laughs> four? <laughs> I think you said six. I think I said six, because what is it? This one, so... Oh, my God. Gosh. There's there's Soup. so there's mm, there's she there's tsu there's no there's me oh may doesn't you may is different I think is it yeah I will we get to it when we get to it all right so I that's... hope you like smiling faces <laughs> <laughs> was my point <laughs> <laughs> so there's a uh, and the next one is Sue. So, Sue is one line down, just like that, and give it an extra pair of legs. So, it's basically like a Naruto runner. <laughs> so. It's the best way to describe it. It's a headless Naruto runner. <laughs> they predicted Area 51, no. <laughs> Now I'm just every time I see a Noir to run I'm just gonna be like Su -su -su -su. <laughs> So uh right. next one is uh Say and uh Say is pretty easy, so it's here and there. Oh start with the that line first, that makes more sense. That follows the rules of yeah. everything else we've done. And that's for say. And then next we have soul, which is when we did she, we did like this here and came up. With this one here is you start at the top and you give an angle here and an angle down like that. And that is so. So one here at an angle down like that. Just like that. Is that kind of like a broken Y? Yep. Next, we're going to do Tachi Tsuteto. So first one is Ta. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to make Ku. And then you're going to add a line. That's all you're going to do. So you make Ku. And add a line. And that'll make ta. The next one we're going to do is chi. She is drawn just like this.
All right, and we'll move on to Tsu. So we had she before that was like this. Tsu is the same thing, but opposite. <laughs> so you start here, and you come down. And the best way to know which one it is, is that when you're doing she, the pen stroke here is pointing upwards. When you do tsu, the pen stroke is pointing downwards. And that's how you tell the difference between the two. Because sometimes it can be confusing and they look like they're they can they can look very similar when you're trying to read them. And the next is te. Te. Just like this. Now I'm going to show you something really funny with Japanese because uh, we'll learn about this a little bit later. Um, so in Japanese, the T sound doesn't exist inside the language. So everything would be chi. But if you wanted to say something that, if you wanted to create a word inside the language where you would use t, you would take te here and this, like, now if you uh, would go to something where it'd be like a party, it would be party, like that. They would write te like this, and then they would put a small i or E at the very end. And then that would be the T sound. So like we learned before with like Sha, where you had the small Ya sound, Ya. For T, they use the small I next to Te. And it's the same thing when we uh, do To. I'll show you that as well too. So for To, here, Here is toe, I just like that. So for toe, if you were trying to finish a, finish a word without like saying the word like cat, like some Japanese people would pronounce it kato because there's no t sound that ends a word in, in Japanese, so they would put a small U at the end of that. So it'd be kat. 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 Yeah. But this one here is toe. All right. And we'll move on to our next group here, which is Nani Nu Ne No. Ne is going to be the fun one. So we have Na next. Yeah, we haven't learned ha yet, but basically the reason why I, re I know this one here is because they use <laughs> banana. <laughs> That's how they write banana. My uh, my oldest son is five. He's he's learning uh, hiragana and katakana, so he's got his kids' books upstairs that he reads. Cool. So he's learning. He's learning these at the same time too. <laughs> so ni. Now, funny thing about ni, is that this is also the kanji, for the number two. So you have one sh uh, line and then one slightly longer line underneath it, for ni. And if you add one more, you have a. But this one here is for ni. And then next we have nu, which is basically the line like you did for su. And instead, in with su, you do this, 
but for new, you do this. It can be curved or it can be straight. Either or is fine. I normally put a little curve in there, but that's just me. Next we have nay. And this one here is the one that takes a little bit longer to draw out correctly. So you start with a little mark at the very top, and then you come in with one stroke, and you put in this character here, which you, you're going to find out is Foo. And then you put one line down and one small line out. So you little mark at the top, come down, make a small line here, and another line out like that. And that will be nay. And then now we come to no. Which is basically so without the little mark here. So oh, you start from the top with no, okay. Yep. No, and you come down, you want to make sure that you're making the little flick here as well, so you can signify that that is the end of the uh, the character itself. There you go. And then next we are going to, I think that's the last one for this group here. And we are over time, slightly. <laughs> I went quick. Yep. And like I'd said before in the other ones, I hate giving homework, but uh, the bad news is, is the only way to learn these is to, in essence, self-study and so you can recognize the character. I can give you all the quizzes in the world and I can give you all the reading material to use in the world, but if you don't do a bit of self-study to recognize the characters themselves, it makes the class a little bit more difficult. So... Uh -huh. The onus is on me so that you guys understand like how the conversation works. The onus is on you to recognize the characters inside the sentences. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's going to be it for tonight, and we'll see everybody again next week. And next week we're going to be doing a lot more conversation. We're going to be finishing up um, Katakana, and we're going to be moving heavily into conversation after this. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, Katakana hiragana is to make sure everyone is able to write correctly. We do a little bit of uh, practice so we can do reading, and then now we're going to be moving into more conversation. So we will see you all next uh, week, Friday, same time, and... Uh, have a good uh, evening, morning, or whatever time it is where you're at, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.